Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is the next step in our discussion about networking and controlling your bench instruments via software. And we talked previously about how to program a signal generator, which we're going to be using in this video. We talked about sweep frequency response analysis, and we're going to be using that in this discussion of programming our instruments. And in this video, we're going to take the next step, and we're going to start to show how to program our oscilloscope and bring everything we've learned so far together to make this application you see here, which is doing an automated sweep frequency response analysis and plotting on a logarithmic graph. In, we're using Visual Studio C Sharp. You can use any software you want. Um, and I encourage you to look at the previous videos. We showed you how to program the signal generator. And in this video, we're going to bring it all together. Now, what you can see here is our oscilloscope as we are changing the frequency of the signal generator, applying a sine wave to our measuring circuit. And we are then grabbing the measured voltage off the oscilloscope. You can see the trace here. And we are plotting it on this graph where vertical axis is the voltage we're measuring from the scope. And the horizontal axis is the frequencies that we are changing the signal generator frequency every second or every two seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to develop this application that brings it all together and uh, does this uh, automation of our bench instruments. So now, as we've mentioned many times before on this channel, the worst thing you can do is jump right in like a novice would do and start writing code. A uh, big mistake because at the end of the day, what will happen is you'll get down a rabbit hole and you'll be making mistakes because you didn't think about it and you're going to get all frustrated and run away crying. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of thought first and design to make sure we know what we're going to be doing. Now, here is a graphic showing the basic configuration of what we've got. We've got our computer here on the right. We're going to be running Visual Studio C Sharp. You can use whatever programming language you want. And we've got USB ports that are going to be connected to our signal generator. And again, in the previous videos, we showed you how to program that, which was going to be setting the frequency. And we're also going to be focusing on, in this video, how to read the voltage measured from the result of our SFRA test. We're going to be measuring voltage using the scope. We're going to be grabbing that voltage every second or two uh, and reading it over the USB port. So now that we have the frequency and the voltage, we can produce a plot. However, um, we need to think about practical considerations. All right, very, very important. First of all, we got to figure out what frequencies are we going to scan. In the previous video on the signal generator, we used a simple algorithm. And the algorithm basically came up with 10 frequencies between the 10 hertz, the 100 hertz, the 1 kilohertz. And it was kind of an algorithm to, to figure that out. And that's fine. However, it doesn't allow you to easily customize your frequencies that you want to scan. And you may decide, well, it's a 60 hertz transformer. I want to get a little bit more frequencies in that low frequency range. And if you go back to the algorithm, it's going to be a little bit confusing to um, have to change the algorithm to customize it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to generate a text file uh, from a spreadsheet like Excel or OpenOffice, whatever. And we're going to manually enter the frequencies. Again, very easy to do and very easy to customize. And we just save it as a text file that we're going to import into our application. Now, the next thing we're going to have to think about is the dynamic scope vertical scale. Keep in mind, here's our oscilloscope. We're going to have, it's going to be measuring some voltage. And we want to make sure that the voltage range is appropriate for the actual voltage. We don't want, for example, we don't want the waveform to be clipped. In other words, if this is a 10 volt signal and we have one volt for division, it's not going to show the entire waveform. That's going to be bad uh, and it's not going to be able to measure it well. So we're going to make sure that we have a vertical scale that takes into account the actual waveform value. Also, we want to make sure the waveform is large enough to measure. So if, for example, um, I have a 0.2 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal and my total scale is 10 volts per division, you're not going to see the waveform. 
So we're going to have to do some dynamic scaling of the scope depending on the magnitude of the waveform. So this is going to be very, very important to ensure we get reasonable values. Um, also, if you know anything about real world devices like instruments, we're going to want to check the measured voltage values and handle any errors. So for example, if we measure, a, we get a measured voltage coming from the scope that says 5,000 volts, we know there's probably something going on, either a timing issue or a reading the data, it wasn't parsed correctly. So we're gonna have to handle errors. We're gonna have to identify errors and handle them in the appropriate way, either ignore the, er uh, the bad reading or filter it based on previous readings. But clearly we're going to have to measure the voltages and check to see if they're reasonable. And with all of that, timing is going to be a big issue. For example, um, if you know about devices, you need to allow time probably for the device to respond. If you're going to send a read-write command over the USB, you know, it's going to take time for the device to respond and settle. So we're going to have to think about that. Maybe you don't need a time delay, but at least you're going to have to say, well, I'm not going to expect it to respond instantly. And with that, we're going to have to figure out what's an appropriate time step. Should we um, measure, should we change the frequency and measure every second or every two seconds? Well, if you're going to have time delays to allow things to respond, devices to respond, and if we're going to be doing, um, for example, dynamic vertical scale, so that means we're going to be changing the scale, we're going to be reading and writing to the devices. So we're going to want to make sure we have a time step that's not too fast so that we allow all of this to occur. So when we look at our code, we're going to have a lot of these considerations included in the code. So now here we are in Microsoft Visual Studio. And again, we're going to be using C Sharp or whatever programming language you want. And we have um, opened up the simple readwrite.2015 solution that's included with the National Instruments Visa software we talked about previously. And this is my modified version. Now, previously we developed a solution in Microsoft Visual Studio to program our signal generator. Here, what we're gonna to do to make it easier for ourselves, um, since programming the oscilloscope is a little bit more detailed, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that simple read-write solution from the uh, National Instruments library that we downloaded, and we're going to use that as the basis, and then we're going to bring in some of the code we developed for the signal generator solution. And this simple rewrite is going to be our basic solution. Let me start this up and show you how this application works. Again, it's just a modified version of this simple rewrite solution. So I'm going to start it up. I've got my oscilloscope and my signal generator connected to separate USB ports. And here is our solution. You can see up here, I've got the signal generator, the COM port, open the COM port, the oscilloscope, um, open session, closed session, that's included with the simple read write from, from National Instruments. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open the COM port for the signal generator. We developed this previously. Open the COM port, you can see COM port five is open. And next, I need to connect to the oscilloscope. I'm going to use the open session that came with this solution. And this is a window that they have, and I can click on this. I know this is the oscilloscope and hit OK. And now both the signal generator and oscilloscope are open. Um, I'm going to leave the time step at 1.5 seconds. And this is all uh, controls that I've added. And I'm going to run the SFRA. So we'll hit run, and you can see here on the left, this text box gives us feedback on what the frequency is and the measured voltage. And then 20 hertz, 2.06, 25 hertz, 1.92. And here is the real-time plotting on a logarithmic graph of the actual measured voltage versus frequency. And you can see we're going from 10 hertz up to 10 megahertz. And here I have the number of bad readings we got from the scope. We've had one bad reading. Otherwise, all of the readings are within a reasonable uh, range. And it's just going through and plotting out. You can see in real time, we're up to one kilohertz, 1.5 kilohertz, and it's down below 0.5 volts. So that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna go through every one and a half seconds 
grab the voltage, change the frequency, grab the voltage, and it's going to go all the way up to 10 megahertz. Now, again, what we did is we wrote out a um, text file that specifies each of the frequencies we want to step through. So we'll talk about that. And we also have to worry about timing and some of the other issues of concern. But this is basically how it works. You got the signal generator, the scope, you have to open the both, set the time step, and then run the SFRA. And we've got some code to open and close the ports and then stop the SFRA. Down here are some controls that came with the original solution. I'm not using those. I just moved them down here to be out of the way. Uh, string to write where you can manually read, write, and query to your um, connected device. And then you can clear the um, text box, but these I'm not using. They're just here in case we want to use them later. But basically, um, if I want to stop, I just stop the SFRA, it closes the ports, and then exit, and we're back to our solution. So that gives you a feel for what we're going to do. Um, we've got two forms. We've got the, the form we're going to use and modify, and then we've got this form for uh, to allow us to select our scope, and that's just basically the existing code from uh, that we talked about previously. But this is where we do the modifications. I've got a chart here, of course. I had to add a chart and some controls. And also down here, I've drag and dropped a system timer. It's going to be every one and a half seconds. It's going to be uh, changing the frequency and grabbing the voltage. So now here is our solution. You can see over here, uh, we go up to the project. Um, they've got references they've added, the IVI visa, National Instruments visa, that's already in there, so you don't have to worry about that. And um, this is basically all we're going to modify is this section of code right here. As you can see, what I've done is I've added um, some regions that I do in all of my code where I've got documentation. I can drop down all the documentation, very important. My to-do list. Uh, all the things that need to be done. Um, I've separated out their initializing. They do a lot of initializing, and I've added some initializing stuff in the beginning. The main form, I've added some stuff. Um, these are all disposed, and the Windows Forms Designer Code, that's all in the existing code. I didn't modify it. Stat thread, that's existing. Um, the only thing I've added is, um, aside from some of this stuff, I've added um, some methods. I've done regions around the methods, the event handlers, and I've also taken some of these buttons here that I'm not using, and I have moved their um, event handlers to this unused section, okay? They're there, but so you can use them later, but they're unused just to clean things up. So let's take a look here, um, the using statements. If you wanted to do this yourself, just pause the video and take a look. Uh, system system collections dot generic of course we're going to be doing lists that list the frequencies and the voltages that we're going to plot uh, system dot io ports of course for the um, com ports system dot threading we talked about timing and we may have to delay to wait for things to settle so system threading we're going to use system windows dot forms national instruments dot visa and system dot globalization so not a lot of using statements and most of them are already existing. In the initializing, they've got a lot of stuff up here. What I've added is the, the Y voltage values as a list and the X frequency values. And these are going to be generated each time step. They're going to start out at zero, a, a count of zero in these. And each time we measure a voltage and a frequency, we're going to add them to the list. The freak valves is a list that has all of the frequencies that we want to set the signal generator to throughout the entire range. So it's going to be fully populated. It's going to bring in that text file with a list of all the frequencies we want and populate it. And then each time step, we're going to start at zero and populate the voltage and frequency values. Okay, so I've got three lists. Uh, frequency index, this is going to step through this list of frequency values and choose uh, subsequent values to set the, free, the signal generator to. Um, I've got a value number of voltage glitches. If we, if we measure a voltage and, and realize that it's out of range, we're going to uh, increment that to tell us how many bad values we have. 
And then here is a command delay in milliseconds. So, for example, if we do a read or a write to a device, we may want to delay by 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. Each time we're going to use this um, command delay that the user can define. So we're going to use, start out with a 50 millisecond delay after we send a command. Um, we've got the serial port we got from last time. Funk gen port is a serial port. And then basically everything else is um, pretty standard. So here we've got the main form, and these first two lines were included in the, in the original simple read-write. Here I've added chart parameters. So um, the minimum, x-axis minimum, we're going to start at 10 hertz. Uh, this is 10 megahertz for a maximum. Uh, the minor grid enabled is true. We're going to need that for the logarithmic. And then minor grid dot interval equals 1. Border width, as we showed before in our videos, um, we showed the border width is the, actually the line width that we're going to be plotting. And I'm going to get rid of all the legends with the legends.clear. Textcom.text, that's just saying we're going to default to a COM port of 5. Um, the, we're going to default to a time step of 1.5 seconds. This is just filling out those text boxes. And then we are going to start out by disabling the com close button and the SFRI stop since they haven't been opened or started. So that's basically it, the main form initializing. So the next thing is going to go down to methods. So open com port, we just brought that over from the other application. It's very simple. Um, this is basic stuff to open a com port. We are also um, adding a method called configure signal generator we'll talk about. Uh, basically, it just sets up the signal generator however we want. And here is the configure signal generator. We set the frequency at 100 hertz. And we talked about this in the previous video. Again, we're adding this 50 millisecond delay. You may not need to do that. I've just got that here for um, doing a thread.sleep just in case. And what we do when we do a write, I automatically do a read existing to read the OK command that we get from the signal generator, okay? So these are just three um, sample things you can use. Um, you don't need them. I just set the started out with 100 hertz and a sine wave and an amplitude of 20 volts. Here we are going to read this frequency file. Uh, here's the path. I'm going to set in a string array called lines and I do a read all lines from that text file that has a list of all the frequencies. And for example, here is our uh, spreadsheet. And what I've done is I've just said, for example, if I want to go 10, 11, 12 for the frequencies, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then to automatically increment, I select both of those and down here, grab, and now it goes, it automatically generates the frequency. So it uh, makes it a lot easier to do, generate custom frequencies and you just save it as a CSV and you're all set to go. We've talked about that in other videos. So um, for each string line in lines, uh, what we do is we parse that text value of frequency, parse it to a double and add it to the list of frequency values. So it, it goes through and populates this list of frequency values with all, uh, in our case, about 300 different frequencies. So you scroll down here, I've got um, 305 different frequencies that I'm using for this um, sweep frequency response. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll pick up where we left off and look at the rest of the code. You can see here um, we have a complete SFRA plot uh, of a power transformer. You can see the inductive capacitive effects here. Uh, we got through it with no bad reading, so we're going to Look in the next video how to, to finish up the code to get all this done. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.